Uh, hello participants, uh, please note that we are waiting for more participants to join this webinar. Till that time, I'm sharing our social media platform link, our communities link and our official website link. So guys, go and follow us on over there to upcoming webinar and workshop.
Okay, let's start the webinar now. Uh, good morning and welcome you all in this session AZ104. Myself, Archie this side. I'm a host for this session. Guys, if you have any question and queries, please put question on chat box. We will be there to help you out. Then moving ahead and talking about event sponsor that is Synergetics. So Synergetics is an India one of kind co-porting learning solution company. Now you will get a question like who we are and what we're doing. So answering your question also give complimentary advisory service to client who wish to modernize their framework. Also we educate, advise and implement and manage. Then the Synergetics solution offering that is a Persona based onboarding solution, onboarding add on solution, certification solution, certification add on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales and pre sales training solution, practice playbook solution, and architecting solution. Then what this Microsoft certification does, it will give you learning experience. You will get trained, build confidence to appear for the exam and get certified. This is skilling journey here. You can advance yourself. First, you have to complete fundamental certification. Then you can go with the advanced role based certification and expert level certification. In fundamental certification, we are providing you five types of certification. That is AZ 900, AI 900, TP 900, PL 900 and SC 900. In associate level certification, we are providing you many types of certification. Here you can see on my screen. In expert level certification, we are providing you AZ305, SC100, PL600, and AZ400. Uh, guys, also we have special certification that is AZ120, AZ140, AZ220. If you want any certification, you can connect us. So certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skills. Also, we do provide certification add-on, onboarding add-on like short duration models and more. Then moving ahead, today training is organized and handled by ATC community. So our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in our cloud technology and various emerging technology. Under ATC community, we have emerging technology community for all. Then Azure Tech community for Punekas. Emerging technology community for Surat Kars. Azure Tech community for Nagpur Kars. Guys, you just uh, install the Meetup app on a device and there you can follow our communities. Then you have to follow code of conduct, which will create a respectful environment for all the participants. Please note participants are not allowed to take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. We will try to upload this training on our official YouTube channel. Today's speaker for this uh, training, uh, Mr. Makkaran Zaboy. He is a Microsoft certified trainer and currently works with Synergetics as a practice head. Yeah. Agenda for this webinar, you will get as uh, know more about this topic and benefit of it. In one day webinar, we are providing you full day workshop that is today, uh, 10 to 6 p.m. Uh, then coming with the self running part, we are providing you complimentary learning achievement badge. You just have to follow the step and you will get the activated badge. Then mentoring and exam prep session. If you have any question, you can submit your question on our feedback form. Then knowledge assessment. By end of this session, we are providing you assessment link. You just have to give your exam and test your knowledge. Here you can see we are providing you AZ104 learning achievement badge. You just uh, have to follow the step and you will get the activated badge. Here you, here you can see the, our upcoming uh, webinar details. Interested participants can go and register themselves. Please note that registration is mandatory to all of us. Uh, make sure guys you follow us on our LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube for upcoming relevant update and workshop and webinar. Thank you. Now, now I would like to hand over this mic our speaker. He will continue ahead. Thank you, Archie. <clears throat> okay, so good morning all. Uh, I hope uh, I'm audible to you. Just can you just uh, Give me a thumbs up if I'm audible or no. 
you write something in the chat box if I'm auditing. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Vinay. Thanks, Abhijit. Okay, so uh, let's begin with the session. So in this uh, session, uh, AZ104 uh, session, I'll, I'll go and give you uh, overview of uh, you know couple of uh, topic, uh, you know, and and you know while doing that, you know I'll show you uh, practically also those concept, whatever concept we will uh, talk in this uh, session specifically we will try to uh, implement all those concepts and while implementing all those concepts uh, you know i will also uh, take you uh, you know okay uh, in my <clears throat> practical i will also involve you guys in, into my practical so that uh, you will be also able to you know do something along with this uh, practical instead of only listening to me okay so at a time I can understand only listening, you know, can be, uh, you know, boring. Okay, but when you do something along with me, you know, then uh, it will it will provide value to it. Okay, so I'll share my screen, and most of the time I will be uh, in in my portal, you know, but initially. We just open this presentation. OK, and uh, before we start with the session, let us you know introduce. Uh, OK, so I'm going to introduce first myself. Uh, later, you have to introduce uh, yourself. OK, but uh, we can't uh, you know, take an introduction you know, by uh, allowing a uh, mic you to speak. You know? OK, it will take a lot of time because uh, no, there are Many people inside this. So what we will do, you will have to write your introduction in the form of a chat box. OK, so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that uh, you know, once I finish my introduction. So my name is uh, Makrand. I'm Microsoft certified trainer. I have completed uh, my certification AZ104 certification. AZ204, that is I am a uh, uh, Microsoft Azure uh, administrator as well as Microsoft Azure uh, developer. And along with that, uh, I have also completed, uh, you know, uh, AZ400. I am Microsoft certified uh, DevOps engineer also. OK. And uh, along, along with that, I have completed the fundamental level of certification, you know, uh, AZ. Uh, 900. So I'm currently uh, working in a synergetics. Uh, OK. Uh, from past, you know, uh, I would say more than 10 years. OK, and I'm total. Uh, I have a total uh, 16 plus years of teaching plus development experience. OK. OK, uh, so that's about me. Yeah. I want to know uh, your name. Uh, your current experience, what you are doing currently. OK, and uh, I want to uh, have your email address. You know, so that that email address I can add inside my Active Directory, you know, and I will also give you some rights on my Active Directory. So whatever I am doing, you know, so you can also be able to do it, you know. So guys, these three things I want to know from you. You know, OK, I want uh, your name. OK, maybe you are uh, currently experienced what you are doing. You know? OK, and uh, then along with that, your email address. Preferably, you provide me a personal email address. OK, uh, and that to Microsoft email ID. You know? Preferably, not compulsory, but uh, you know, preferably. OK, so these three things you can write, please, in a one single message. OK. Please write it in a one single message. OK, so that uh, it will be good for us to track. Archie, are you there, Archie? 
Yes, sir. Uh, so, can you just gather this information and uh, extract all email address? And uh, can you just send it to me, please? Because I, uh, you know, I am going to add them inside uh, my Active Directory. Okay, sir. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for your putting the messages. Actually, I want only email address. Huh? Okay, sir. Okay, and uh, if you can do it now only, you know, that will be better. You know, okay. So, so I'm doing okay. only. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, so guys, uh, no, meanwhile, people are entering their name. Let, let me continue. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> sorry. I'll tell you what we are going to do in, in this particular session. Okay. So uh, in this particular session, uh, we will be discussing uh, mostly a three topic. Uh, the first, uh, we will be discussing uh, Azure Entra ID. You know? uh, so I will just go and explore uh, Entra ID concept and I'll add uh, some members. Maybe I'll add a uh, few uh, groups you know? and I'll add uh, uh, you guys into that mem you know, group. And you know, I will just manage the permissions by using uh, that uh, security group. So first topic. We'll see uh, the entra ID. Okay. Second topic, uh, we'll see uh, you know, virtual network. Okay. So we'll create virtual network. We'll deploy some machine inside that virtual network. You know? So we'll see how to create a virtual network, how to create virtual machine, you know, and we'll understand the concept of uh, you know, that. And we'll see uh, connectivity between uh, those two you know, virtual machines which might be uh, deployed inside a virtual network or inside two different virtual network. You know, we'll see that. OK, and finally, uh, we will be uh, talking about um, app service. You know, so app service we will create an app service. We'll deploy some application inside that app service. And we'll uh, everybody will you know, access that uh, application. So these three point, uh, you know, I've decided, uh, you know, in this particular session to to be uh, included. Okay, so let's 
let's begin with this session. And most of the time, as I said, I will be in in the you know okay in the portal. Okay, I won't be touching uh, you know the presentation as of now. Okay, so I'll be uh, doing the things practically. So before we start with the session, let me just tell you an overview of uh, you know okay certification path. Okay. So, uh, what we are doing today, so that covers AZ104 or the topics from AZ104, you know, we are doing currently, you know, so, which is an Azure administrator, which is an Azure administrator, okay. But uh, if you are, you know, appearing for that Azure administrator, you know, it is uh, good to give that exam of Azure fundamental. But it is currently it is not compulsory. Okay, currently it is not compulsory to give that examination of Azure uh, fundamental. The fundamental examination is optional. Okay, so. Azure administrator, you have a certification code as AZ104. Okay, and uh, this is an associate level certificate. Okay, so there is one more associate level certificate uh, you have. Okay, AZ204, uh, which is an uh, Azure developer. Which is an Azure developer. So we have the exam code for that is AZ204. Okay, so once you finish either one of the certificate, uh, you will get, uh, you know. Associate level certificate, you know, which will have you know, uh, a two star included. You know, so two two star means what? Uh, if you are getting a two star uh, certificate uh, from Microsoft, uh, then uh, you are getting some kind of associate level certificate. Okay, but it is recommended. Uh, you know, okay, if you have a scope of giving another exam, I will recommend you to give. Uh, you know, okay. Uh, as your fundamental exam, if you're new to, of course, okay, uh, the Azure or the cloud. Okay, so Azure fundamental exam and which is exam code is AZ900. Okay. And once you finish this exam, you will get an uh, entry level certificate. Uh, which has a single star included in that. OK. And nowadays, uh, you know, uh, maybe after COVID, uh, Microsoft has made uh, you know, this exam is optional. AZ uh, 900 exam is optional. It's not compulsory to give that uh, exam. OK, you can directly appear for, uh, you know, uh, associate level exam. OK, so. But if you are having a know uh, some scope of giving this examination you know, i will recommend you to give this examination and then later you can you know move to uh, one of the track you know so i suppose if you are joining this session you know so you are uh, interested in azure administration you know so so uh, you can go for az104 or you can finish uh, you know az204 or there are you know other tracks are also available once you finish uh, you know any one of this associate level course, you know, then you can move to the expert level course. You know, so I'll just go and mention there are two expert level course. You know, I'll just mention. So first one is uh, AZ305. As your. Architect. Okay, 
the exam code for that is AZ305. Okay, and you can, or you can complete as your DevOps in details. The exam code for that is AZ400. So once you finish this examination, you will get uh, a three star certificate. You're going to get a three star certificate and uh, you can come from either from Azure administrator background you no, know, or from Azure developer background for completing uh, architect exam. You no, know, for finishing this Azure DevOps engineer exam you can come from you know either from you know again from administration background or you know you come from uh, developer background okay so this is an expert level certification okay so i would say uh, the difficulty level of this certification is uh, you know uh, moderate level okay. and uh, the difficulty level of this uh, certification moderate to you know difficult level Okay, so once you finish this certification, you will get associate. And once you complete this, you will be getting an expert level certification from the Azure. Okay, and uh, point to note, there is no validity for this particular exam. So there is no as such validity. Okay, so once you clear this uh, AZ900 exam, then it will be, you know, inside your certification profile, you know, active throughout, uh, you know, the lifetime. Okay, so there is no expiry date for this certification exam once you get this certification. Okay, but there is a validity for these associate level and expert level certifications. You know, so you have a one year of validity. You know, so every year you should go and renew that certificate. You know, so you have one year of validity. Okay, currently you have one year of validity for associate level certificate or for developer. Uh, or for expert level certificate. So every year you should go and renew your examination. Okay, uh, renewal is free, free of cost. Okay, but once you are, you know, uh, giving this examination for the first time, you know, you have to pay. Okay, but renewal, you know, uh, is free. Currently, uh, Microsoft is not charging anything for renewal of the examination. Okay, so let me save this uh, diagram. So I'll just go and come here. I'll to save this. Okay, so I hope uh, you must have got an idea about the certification path. So, anybody is having a question? Let me take a question. Akash is asking as your data analyst engineer, can you recommend? Uh, this is not about uh, Akash. Uh, this is not about uh, uh, as your data engineer or uh, uh, analyst data analyst co You know, this is for as your administrator. Okay, there are uh, you know a mini session going on you know, 
okay so you can connect to uh, archie okay and they will let you know uh, no okay archie will let you know about uh, the the data analysis session or uh, the one which is uh, in your interest area okay but of course you can go into the how to prepare for the any kind of a microsoft exam you know i will say there is a common uh, technique for preparing for the you know for any microsoft examination you know so you have to go to microsoft uh, official page of that particular exam whichever exam you are interested in so currently you know we are interested in az 104 you know so you can search for exam page you know so you can search for az 104 exam page so if you are interested to find out something else you can just go and find it out you know something else so i'm searching for az 104 exam page and if i go inside this exam page i will get everything related to that examination okay so in this particular examination page you will get all the required study material you know so if you are um, interested in uh, data analysis maybe uh, that course is dp203 something so i believe the exam code for that is dp203 so you can go into this google and search for dp 203 you know exam page you can search for that exam page okay and you you will get everything related to that examination you know okay but we will be talking about you know this examination now now if you are searching for this uh, particular examination is the 104 No. then on this page this is the official uh, microsoft uh, exam page on this page there are many thing you can do you know so i will uh, recommend you to you know bookmark this uh, page and save it in your browser you can schedule your exam you know? so from here you can schedule the exam okay and uh, the exam price is uh, you know 165 us dollar but uh, that is going to provided uh, uh, for the india people in the discounted rate uh, so something uh, 4800 rupees uh, you know we are getting it over here okay, so if you look at the price for india you know it is 4800 rupees okay so you can schedule your exam in this page okay and when you schedule your exam uh there are two ways in which you can give your exam the first one is uh, you can visit to the official promatrix center okay so you can schedule your exam okay uh by visiting official promatrix center you can pay them directly you know okay and uh, you can ask them to schedule your exam for so and so date okay or else you can schedule your exam online by visiting this page and come to this link and click on this uh, schedule exam uh, button okay and uh, when you are doing it online there are also two way to appear for the exam one you can select uh, nearest promatrix center okay or you can uh, you know okay choose to give the examination from your home okay but if you are choosing uh, for uh, uh, exam for, from uh, your home then it is uh, compulsory to you you to have a separate room nobody should enter into that room okay and uh, you know okay uh, maybe uh, you should not speak because you know uh, during the examination there there will be a proctor you know who is going to monitor you okay so you will have to follow certain uh, rules you know okay when you are appearing the examination from the home okay so one point you can schedule your exam from this page okay you will get you no know, study material you know so microsoft is frequently updating 
you know their exam course exam outline you know so at the time of you appearing for the examination what is the curriculum for the examination you know so what is the topic you know so these are the vetage for the topic you know you are having for the examination okay then you, know, you will get the the study material you know so all the study material you know required for this examination okay so you will get it from this uh, you know okay the module so this module is very very nicely designed you know okay so now you can go and uh, you know read read them you can you know okay go and practice all the uh, demo exercises okay because all the exercises uh, you know that steps also are given nicely inside uh, you know this uh, this learning path okay so you can finish your uh, lab which are uh, given after every uh, every uh, module learning module okay and there is a separate url for az 104 labs you know so labs are also accessible to anyone so you can go and access the lab so all these are the lab these are github page only so you can you know access this lab over here okay so these labs are also very nicely designed you know so every steps are given what to do what to follow okay but to perform this lab you know okay only thing you require a subscription you know so if you are having a subscription if uh, your company provides you a subscription you can go and uh, you know do this lab on your own okay so first i have discussed this will allow you to provide uh, allow you to schedule your exam second you know all the study material related to this exam you will find you know in this exam page okay third you will get uh, exam uh, outline exact exam outline updated exam outline you will get so this has been updated uh, 26 uh, october 2023 okay and then you know you will get an opportunity to appear for some few uh, practice test also you know so you can take a free practice test also okay and uh, uh, in every practice test you will get 50 question you know and you can access them any number of time you know so every time you will see you know there will be a uh, a uh, unique question you will see okay there are few questions which will be get repeated you know but uh, mostly you will see the unique questions only so this resource is very very important very very handy okay and and you no know, you will get exam sandbox also if you are appearing for this examination for the very first time okay then i will encourage you to go to you know this exam sandbox you know and just see how this exam will look like you know okay so this will give you exact same kind of an interface uh, you know uh, when you go and give the examination okay this will show you exactly same kind of an interface so it will provide you some uh, real experience okay in uh, in kind of uh, you know a uh, look and feel uh, kind of a uh, thing okay so you can just go and uh, you know feel something okay so this is exact way you will see the questions or oh, sorry uh, you will see the interface okay so over here you will get the real uh, examination uh, question number of question the so number of question uh, you know vary in between 42 to you know okay uh, 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 60 question max okay but i have noticed that uh, you will get only uh, you know 42 uh, uh, 50 question there are how many case studies okay what's the maximum time so 120 uh, minutes is a maximum time sorry not 120 minutes 
Yeah, one twenty minute total. You will get a uh, maximum time okay, for this examination to be complete. Okay, and to clear this examination, you have seven seven hundred. Uh, you know, you should score seven hundred. That is seventy percent. You should uh, score. Okay, and if you just go to the next, you know, exactly same thing, you will get it. Okay, and when you say start exam, okay. Uh, so you can go and read, okay. And this way you will see exact interface, okay. So this way you will get a question. You can read the question. You can, you know, okay, add appropriate answers. So on. of course, these questions are, you know, some uh, dummy questions, okay. But you will get a real question like this only, you know. So this is the pattern of the exam. You know, so one correct option you can just go and choose. You know, so I'm choosing one option randomly. Okay, and uh, there will be uh, multiple choice questions also. You will get. You know? So if you're getting a multiple choice question, you know, it will ask you, it will specify how many correct option you need to mark. You know, so you can mark any two correct options. Okay, um, and as of now, for getting the score of uh, from this particular course, uh, this particular question, you should go and mark all the correct options. Otherwise, you will not get the you know uh, score for this question. Next one, you know, uh, I will get some something like this kind of interface. Okay, you can, if you want to read the question, you can hide this, you know, you can scroll up. Okay. And, you know, okay. So if you feel this question is going to take a, a lot of time, you know, I can just mark this for a, you know, review later. Okay, and I can move to the next question. So managing your time in this kind of examination is going to be very, very critical because you will get a lot of questions which include a lot of text. Okay, you have to read all the text, you know, and then you'll have to, you know, uh, answer that particular question. Okay, so you will not get enough time. Okay, so if you do not manage your time well, you know, so the question you are comfortable, you can appear for that question straight away. Okay, and uh, the question which you are not comfortable, you can just go and okay, uh, mark that for a review, okay, and come back later. Okay, some question also include uh, you know okay, uh, some kind some kind of a setting you can do it in on the uh, graphical, the GUI, you know, you have to read this question, you know, and do appropriate setting. You know, this kind of a question also you will get where you have to choose appropriate answer in the drop down list. Okay, again, okay, you will have to do some kind of a setting. Okay, and this is kind of a question you, where you will get uh, you know uh, some case study. Yeah. So you have to read the question. But uh, usually reading the question in such scenario, you will not get the you know, uh, essence of the question unless understand requirement, existing environment, and overview. So, you no, know, such kind of a question will take a lot of time to read. You know? So you should have a practice of uh, you know solving that kind of a questions, you know, so that you can manage your time well in the examination. You know? So you can. Come over here like this. You can go and you know, okay, attempt. Okay, so this is another kind of a question. Okay, and you will get this kind of a question also, where you will get uh, different tabs, and normally you will get uh, multiple questions over here. So you have to mark them. Okay, and once you, you know, click on. Last screen, you know, um, 
it will tell you what the how many question are not answered you know, for review. You know? So you can go back and answer that also. OK, uh, it is not having any kind of a negative score, so it is recommended to appear for all the question. You know? So. Attempting all question is necessary. Not necessary, but uh, it's good because it is not carrying any kind of a negative or negative marks. So I'll come back. And you know, can say finish. So once you say finish, you will get the score in front of you immediately. OK, whether you are pass or you are uh, not able to clear. OK, if you are not able to clear, it will tell you, you know, OK, uh, what area you should uh, you know your focus so in which uh, particular uh, area you have score no okay how much you have score in which particular uh, area learning path okay and which one you should focus so it will give you some uh, uh, links also okay so you can do a uh, no uh, study and reappear okay so apart from that uh, you know OK, you are having. Some exam prep videos also. You can click on this and you can just go and visit that also. So for any kind of examination. OK, so. Any kind of a Microsoft examination, you should uh, know, okay, uh, go to appropriate. Uh, uh, the exam page and you should find the relevant information. As of now. Microsoft is providing this dummy question or this free sample practice assessment. Uh, okay, for some, you know, okay, uh, some some exam, not for all exam. Okay, but Microsoft is, uh, you know, okay, working on it uh, so that uh, you will see in future for the uh, all the exam. Okay, so I'll take a question. So, do you have any kind of a question as of now? How to do network scanning? Uh, what uh, Madhuraj? Madhun Raj, what you're asking? How do you uh, network scanning with the Azure network? I didn't understand your question. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Khan. Yeah. Uh, Rajiv is asking for AZ 305 examination. Is it compulsory to complete AZ 104 or 204? Yes, it is. You know, uh, it is uh, compulsory, not only AZ 104 or 204, but any associate level certificate you require. OK, and uh, you can go to that again to the certification path. You can go and explore the prerequisite. But as of now. I'll tell you these are the prerequisite. So these are the prerequisites. So for finishing this examination, OK, it is compulsory to complete either 104 or 204 or any equivalent uh, associate level certificate. OK. But you know, it will not restrict you if you are giving this exam for the very first time. The first exam you appear from Microsoft is, let's say this. AZ 400 or AZ 305. It will not restrict you. So in case you are clearing that, you will get the scorecard. But you will not get the certificate unless you finish the prerequisite exam. So it is compulsory for me to get, you know, okay, 
to in order to get a certificate of this three zero five or four hundred examination, so it is compulsory me to uh, you know have the administrator certificate or developer certificate. Okay, but that is not compulsory for this one. Okay, for getting uh, uh, administrator certificate or uh, nine hundred uh, sorry uh, uh, developer certificate is not compulsory to complete. You know, AZ nine hundred. It is optional. Earlier it was compulsory. Okay, but nowadays it is not compulsory. But it is compulsory in this case. In the expert level certificate, you should have any equivalent associate level certificate. Manish, uh, will you cover a new feature of Entra ID? Entra ID, you know, okay. Uh, it just, uh, you know, name they have changed. And, you know, there are no assertion, new feature they have added. So whatever be the uh, you know, feature uh, they are having uh, in the Azure Active Directory, you know, it is provided, uh, you know, in, in the Entra ID. And exactly same kind of a feature, you know, they have provided in the Entra ID. So only the name they have changed. Uh, from 26th October 2023, they have changed the name. And one more point, you know, earlier it was very easy for me to grab uh, while creating a uh, you know new tenant. I can easily able to grab uh, premium licenses, but nowadays it is you know difficult to get a premium licenses. So it is very difficult uh, for an individual to you know okay uh, practice. The concept of SSPR, self-service password reset, you know, okay, maybe uh, uh, conditional access, okay. So, you know, it is very difficult to practice all those, uh, you know, uh, a concept because uh, Microsoft has made the process of, uh, you know, uh, uh, creating a tenant very hard, okay, and uh, getting a free license is very very difficult. Uh, getting a premium license is very, very difficult. Uh, yes, uh, you will get a recording, but the recording will be updated on the YouTube channel. It will not be directly sent to you. Uh, it will be, uh, you know, uploaded on the YouTube channel. Correct, Nitin. Uh, so it is not compulsory for writing easy uh, 104 examination is not compulsory easy 900 it is not compulsory okay no so it is not compulsory as of now not compulsory Okay, okay, guys. Uh, uh, Arshi, did you send, you know, share that uh, uh, participant email address to me? Yes, I shared on mail, sir. Ah, okay. I'll, I'll get it. Okay, so I'll just uh, open. Just one second. Uh, I'll just stop the sharing. And I'll just get. Take it in the you know, pad. Okay, it is a okay. Okay, so I'll add all these uh, email address in my Active Directory in my Entra ID. So let me just go and show you. Uh, let me just show show you that Entra ID uh, concept. So I close this. And I'll come to the 
enter id when presentation you know, i'll just show you this uh, enter id presentation so these are the certification path you can see and very first thing i will be discussing you know okay about um, about the enter id you know so i'll now prefer this so i'll just go and write my own diagram so for example you're having several several resources which are present inside microsoft azure okay so you're having several resources which are present inside microsoft azure you know okay so resources such as uh, resource group you know so you might have resource group 1 you know okay uh, you might have resource group 2 okay and in every resource group maybe uh, you might be having uh, some resources you know okay for example you might have a virtual machine Okay, and in other Ashita uh, Kankar. Huh? Okay, so the another resource group might have. the virtual machine uh, maybe it is might be having some kind of a database you know okay some app service also okay so maybe there are several resources which are present inside uh, my uh, azure you know subscription you know so all these resources can be present inside the subscription you know okay so this is my subscription let's say so i'm having uh, one subscription okay so this is my subscription no i'll say name of this subscription is my subscription this subscription is having couple of resource group so this is your you no know, let's say a resource group 1 okay. resource group okay. resource group 1 okay and this is maybe your resource group So your subscription may have a resource group, and every resource group, you know, okay, uh, whatever be the resources we will create, you know, so all those resources uh, should be uh, created under, you know, resource group, particular resource group. So this is your VM, okay. Maybe I'm having the name of this VM, okay, VM one, okay. Maybe I am creating another VM called as VM two, okay. I'm creating one database. okay the database is uh, related to uh, maybe sql database okay. okay i'm creating one app service where to keep uh, the app so this is my app service okay so i'm having lot of resources which are present inside my subscription okay and okay i want uh, you know uh, my organization people whatever be the organization employee you know okay i want to provide access to my organization employee you know so where i can store you know okay 
my organization employee data you know so there is one resource which will be provided by the microsoft and which is okay identity provider and the name of that resource is microsoft entra id earlier formerly it was called as microsoft uh, azure ad okay it was called as active directory because uh, that re, uh, that that got uh, renamed okay microsoft has rebranded microsoft active directory as microsoft entra id okay uh, and it was because purely uh, in the on premise network we have windows server active directory you know uh, just to uh, you know make some distinction between windows server active directory and uh, entra id uh, and the microsoft azure active directory you know so that's they have renamed it as entra id and entra id nowadays can store the identity for the users identity for the people's users or identity you know for my application also you know so for example over here in the entra id you know so this is your what is this going to do this is going to provide the identity You know, so entra id is going to act as a identity provider so whatever be the users will be registered inside the entra id you know okay i can give you know, appropriate permission to all my users of my entra id you know okay to access you know these resources okay so what this can store you know so this can store users so for example you know i'll just draw a couple of users so i'm having a user okay so i can just go and create the, the account for that particular user okay in my entra id and then i can provide the access to that user okay for access you know okay accessing my uh, resources okay so let's say i'll just draw three users okay so when they registered over here so the administrator needs to register you know okay all these user into the entra id so once they registered you know okay each user will get something called as a user principal you know so once once they have a user principal okay they will be making use of user principal you know okay maybe for getting into the you know, the azure portal okay or you know the administrator can use that user principal to give the access on any particular resource okay so once you get the user principal okay the entra id uh, you know okay will have okay will know you are the you know okay uh, valid person to access the portal okay so by using this user principal i can able to access the azure portal also okay and then then later i can assign the permission on maybe particular virtual machine or particular resource group okay no or particular database app service i can just go and you know control that permission you know okay and if i want to control that permission how can i control that permission okay by using you know r back just a second four o'clock la ladies this is the four o'clock la ladies and one four o'clock la good so 
I hope uh, am I audible to you? Okay. So once you uh, you know create this user, you know you will get the user uh, principle. Okay. And by using that user principle, you know I can either access a portal or administrator can you know grant some permission on that you know for for that uh, user principle. You know? So administrator can go and uh, grant some permission on the resource group level. Okay. Either on this resource group level or on this resource group level or on this entire subscription. You know, or on particular, you know, okay, resource. Okay. So so once I have the user principle ready with my uh, entry ID, user administrator or uh, the uh, access administrator, you know, or a global administrator can give the permission, you know, on the subscription, so that all these user will be able to see everything what is there inside the subscription. Okay. I can give a permission on a resource group, particular resource group, either on resource group one, resource group two, or I can give a permission on you know particular resource which is present inside resource group. You know, and that permission, you know, okay, how can I control? You know, so that permission I will be able to control through you know R back. Okay, and what is R back stands for? Role based access control. Okay, so using a role based access control, you will be controlling you know all the permissions. Okay, got it. So I'll just save this, and uh, uh, along with the entry ID is going to provide you know okay all the users. Along with that, it can also have some of the applications also. You know okay, so. You might have one application created and that application wants some permission of uh, you know the database you know okay so your external application how you know uh, can uh, get the access of a uh, you know, database okay one of the way there are many, many ways to provide the access to the application but i'll just say one of the way okay uh, i can register the application okay and I can get for this application, okay, service principle. Okay, so how can I get the access of my application? So I'll just go and draw it in a same color. Okay, so if I have an application over here, okay, maybe my external application. That may be either a web based application or console based application. And this application requires the access of a database or access of a virtual machine or access of any resources present in the, you know, okay, uh, Azure subscription. Okay, so for that, you, you have to register that application inside the entry id once you register this application inside the entry id you will get something called as a service principle okay and using that service principle you can okay you can get the access of a you know required resource from the you know entry id or uh, from the subscription okay so in short let me just summarize what is an Microsoft Entra ID? So Microsoft Entra ID is an identity provide provider which provides the identity to the users. So once the user will add it into a Microsoft Entra ID, they will get a user uh, principle, or it can provide the identity to the uh, application also. So once the application is registered inside the uh, Microsoft Entra ID, they will get you know service principle and using that service principle or user principle you know okay somebody needs to give an access okay so maybe a global administrator or a, you know access administrator you know will go and give a access of a resource group one to the user maybe user one user two user three 
or I can give an access to of, uh, you know, okay, my database, okay, to the service principal, okay. So that from this application, I can go and access the, you know, okay, in the database, okay. So once you have this identity present inside, you know, okay, the entry ID, then later somebody needs to give that permission by using, you know, our back. Got it. So I'll just go and save this and. OK. So I hope you have understood this and I'll just go and uh, take some questions. Is there any kind of a question? Security using policy. Yeah, so you can use, uh, you know, okay, uh, policies also. You know, policies, uh, RBAC and policy. You know, uh, Rajiv is asking what's the difference between R RBAC and security policy. Uh, so RBAC uh, is particular, you know, okay, uh, permission I'm giving to a user principal or, uh, you know, service principal. Okay, so I can give a read permission or maybe. Um, Access permission or maybe uh, you know con uh, contributor permission or you know okay the owner permission I am giving it you know so let's suppose say I am giving owner permission on the subscription or I am giving a con contributor permission on the subscription okay so that person will be able to create any resource inside that subscription okay yes so if you have a contributor access that person will be able to create any resource. You know inside the okay resource group but if you you know uh, restrict some resources to be created within the organization so for example okay uh, there is one very very expensive resource you know okay and you cannot create uh, you know that uh, expensive resource so for that they have created some kind of a policy organization has created some kind of a policy so despite of having the access of creating that resource you won't be able to create that resource due to the policy violation okay so policy you know okay will uh, provide you know okay the governance okay so for example uh, as per my uh, you know i'm working on the government project okay so as per my, uh, you know, uh, Indian government policies, you know, your data, the government data or uh, uh, whatever be the Aadhaar data, which should not go, uh, you know, okay, away from India region. You know? So you can create one policy, okay, so that, uh, you know, your data will stay inside the, you know, India region only. So whatever be the database uh, will be created, that can be created only in the India region. Okay, so though, a particular person is having, you know, okay, of creating a database outside India region, but that person will not be able to create uh, that uh, database outside India region due to that policy violation. Okay, so that's a, you know, okay, broader picture, you know, uh, the difference between policies and are back. Okay, so I'll just go and you know, okay, uh, show you. Uh, we'll take a break, uh, but uh, you know, we'll take a break uh, after I you know just show you one user uh, created. So let me just go and log in, you know, inside my portal. So I just logged in inside my portal, so let me just go and. Open my portal. Where is a portal? This is the portal. So I've just logged in into my portal. No. Okay. 
so so if you have a valid subscription with you then uh, you know you will be able to access this particular portal okay by going into uh, portal.azure.com you know so this is the url you know to get into this particular so portal.azure.com will ask you uh, some credential okay you will have to provide the credential okay and with that credential of course some resource group or uh, sorry some uh, subscription must be attached you know and if you are having a you know correct subscription then you will be able to log into this particular uh, website okay now i'll just show you uh, quickly you know so if you just go and click on this uh, okay this three button three bar so you will get all the services you know okay so when you click on this all services you no know? okay so here you will see all the services okay so we are having lot of services you know so services related to the ai services related to the compute services related to the containers database de devops you know identity you know? so all those services i will get it so in the microsoft azure you know whatever uh, number of services you are having you can see all of them you know so if i want to see a particular service related to the only compute you know so you can come to the compute section and you will see all the services which are related to the compute section so you know i will just categorize them as iis you know platform as a service okay pass i can see the services related to the identity okay so microsoft entra id is uh, one which is uh, related to the identity after registration i can do it uh, through you know okay uh, microsoft entra id only okay so app registration is one uh, you know okay related to the application registration the okay i can create a tenant b2 b2c tenant b2b tenant okay then container you know so these are some some services uh, which are related to the containers you know so you can explore all those services you know once you get the access of uh, you know subscription and how will you get so if you are currently not having access of a subscription okay so once i go and add a particular user you know so how will i add you people into my subscription you know so very first thing you know i can go to entra id okay so you can go to entra id microsoft entra id you can come from here you can select that entra id uh, from all services or you can search for that entra id required ser uh, service from this search box also you know so that will you know show you okay the entra id page so entra id uh, is a service which is provided by the microsoft uh, you know uh, which will be providing the identity to the application or to the users so currently if you look at you know there are in my subscription there are 21 users present four groups which are present and 20 application which are uh, you know okay are registered you know so if i this i don't want now if i just go and uh, remove some of my existing user because i don't want them to be part of the subscription I just go and remove all of them except me because the all the users not from my last batch okay so let me say delete all the user no so all those users i have deleted so once i refresh it you should see 
Now all those delete it. So I should show only one user currently present inside my Active Directory. You know? So if you want to add a user, you know, you can come over here. You can say, you know, create one user. Okay. So I'll just come to this and I can say create new user. You know? So I'm adding a new user directly inside you know, my Entra ID as a as a member. You know? So I'm adding a new user as a member. So if I just go and add a new user, you know, so by default, you know, it will have you know, some kind of a domain and this domain, okay, uh, you will get at the time of uh, creating a new tenant. But currently, as I said, you can't, uh, you know, able to create a new tenant, okay, uh, because uh, from uh, uh, Microsoft Entra ID, uh, they have uh, changed the name. No, they have added one constraint. You cannot, uh, you know, uh, acquire that premium licenses of an Entra ID unless you are the premium license holder. Okay. So currently I'm not the premium license holder. I'm having a free license for this particular active directory. No. Okay, so it is not possible for me to, you know, okay, have uh, one more tenant. Okay, so I'll just rather, I'll just, uh, no, okay, just go and create a directly a user. So, so you can see this, you will get this once you go and registered, yourself uh, uh, for the particular subscription okay so if you are getting a subscription your own subscription then you will you know okay get your own uh, name over here okay but in in my case i'm getting this name okay because i have registered for the subscription so this email id has registered for this subscription okay and for example i'm just adding user user one over here okay so user one okay it will go and provide you a password so I'll, let me take that password it will help us me to log in so that user one okay after creating this will get you know okay a user principle as i said okay and that user principle you know will be exactly this so user one at the rate you know makran boyer live dot on microsoft dot com so that will be uh you know entire will be acting as a user principle so at the time of creating a user i can go and assign some rules also you no know, but i don't want to do that i'll do it later you know so i'll just go and say create new user okay and this will be my user principle ultimately it will be generated you know and by using this you know i can be able to you know connect to the portal okay so my user is created i can just go and refresh you know maybe after waiting for a few seconds you can just go and refresh it and you can see the user so this is a user principle created for this user Okay, so now I can take this user principle. I can go to another window. You know, I can say portal.azure.com. I'm opening in the incognito window. It will ask me to provide a sign in. So I'll just go and provide the user principle. Copy this. Provide the user principle. Okay. So I'm just providing my user principle over here. Okay, and then click on a next. When you say next, it will ask you a password. I'll paste that password which you have which which I have copied during creation time. And for the very first time, it is necessary for me to change my password. You know, so I'll take this password. Okay, 
I'll change my password. So let me just point my cues off my own password. Okay, so I'm typing my password. And once I type my password correctly, so I'm regularly using this password, that's why it is not taking that password. Let me use different password. Okay, so when I use a different password, uh, okay, this will be allowed. Okay, and uh, uh, you have to provide, you have to register uh, any uh, email ID, the external email ID with this. Okay, by the way, it will allow you to uh, access this portal for 14 days. Okay, so it is okay. So ask me later. So I don't want to do it now. And I'll just log in. So once that user is logged in, you know, okay, that user will able to see like this kind of a window. You know? So this user is having access of the portal, you know, but of course, since I have not provided any access on my subscription, you know, so here, if you search for a subscription, you won't be able to see any kind of a subscription. If you search for a, a resource group virtual machine, you won't be able to see, you know, any virtual machine, any resource group. You know, though, you know, it will allow you to log in because, you know, that user principle was present inside the entry ID. Okay. So I hope, uh, you know, here you are able to understand. Okay, uh, so uh, after the uh, break, I will add add you people in in my subscription. Okay. Uh, so whatever be the number of people I'm having, you know, so I'll add all those people in my subscription. So these member I'm having. Okay. So I'll add all these people in in my subscription. Okay, and they will be able to access once I you know okay. Provide the subscription. Uh, sorry, uh, once I added all these member into my Active Directory in in my entire ID, you know they will be able to uh, you know do it. Okay, so before I take uh, you know repeat this. Uh, sorry, before before we take a break, uh, let me just take a few question. Yes, uh, Dhirendra, I believe. Archie, is this session is recording? Yeah, I believe it is recorded. Okay, and you will see the recording uh, in the uh, uh, in the YouTube channel. How frequently try to get sync? Just okay. Uh, then you will have to use uh, something called as a intra ID connector. You know, to do uh, sync up with the. Uh, the on-premise entry ID with the uh, Microsoft entry ID. Uh, Kashid is asking about the premium member. Uh, currently, it is uh, provided like this. You know, okay, Kashid. Uh, no? So currently, if I see the entry ID, entry ID, if I'm holding a license, okay, I'm holding a free license. So if I just go and click on this license, okay, or over here in the entry ID overview page itself, it is showing me, you know, entry ID free. I'm using entry ID free license. And uh, the member or the person who is having entry ID free license, for that person, it is not possible, you know, okay, to create a new tenant, you know. So for creating a new tenant, I'll go to this. Manage tenant. Okay. 
and these are the all the tenants which i have created way back you know okay before uh, uh, the 20 uh, 26 uh, of uh, october 2023 you know so i used to create uh, you know many intra id without uh, having you know premium license okay but nowadays it is you uh, know okay very difficult for me to create a uh, own tenant so that i can have my own custom uh, you know uh, uh, i can have my own custom uh, uh, domain name you know so can you see this it is not possible for me to create the intra id now it is the option is disabled only okay earlier be, before uh, you know that uh, uh, 26 october 23 it was available and it was uh, under you know uh, microsoft intra id or microsoft ed b2b business to business okay and here in the configuration section i used to set uh, my organization name my domain name so all that detail i used to provide okay and i can't uh, you know get you know there is one option you can go and upgrade your free license to the premium one you can do that okay but for that also you know so for upgrading this free license to the premium license no i need some additional information so and i'll show you that also so if you come to the licenses okay and uh, you know in the licenses if you just come to the you know, all uh, all licenses all products you know and you can say try by you know you can click on this try by you can generate a free license uh, sorry uh, you can generate a free trial of premium license you know so free trial will include you know okay for 30 days i can activate that but you know when i click on that activation finally it will ask me you know okay uh, at the time of completing this particular form it will ask me some kind of a gstn number so that individual person will not have a gstn number no you know so it is uh, for the organization they have you know okay provided or providing this particular facility so for the individual uh, to practice something you know if you have that gst in number if you are willing to provide that you know you can do that but i don't have that gst in number you know okay so that i'll get this premium license okay so there are these restriction has been added you know okay uh, once uh, after uh, 23 26 october 23 okay when they have renamed or rebranded not say renamed rebranded as a uh, microsoft intra id okay so whatever be the license you know okay we are having i'll just you know, show you uh, with that license only okay i hope uh, you know this is clear to you okay thank you uh what is this yeah this uh, recording will be included uh, in the full length uh you need to provide that email id so that i can add okay so we have taken that email id from you guys only i have just uh, uh, use this over here okay so just provide your email id only in the uh, in the chat box i'll just add in the free intra id license what can uh, in the free intra id license i can use uh, all the feature of uh, you know free license that means i can create a user i can you know okay create group i can you know uh, add a application i can add a device you know all that thing i can do it but uh, the feature like for example self service password reset conditional access you know so all the features of premium license i won't be able to you know use you know and if you want to see 
you can just also explore uh, if you want to see all product you can go or license feature you can go and you will see you know all the license feature of premium license okay you can see all these features you know of premium licenses okay so for the free limit license no i think 5 lakh user enter id user object can be limited that is more than okay so we'll take a break now you know maybe break of 15 minutes and we'll come back after break you know and we'll uh, add you guys into my enter id so that you also will be able to access my portal okay so meanwhile people you can go and add uh, your email id and rc i'll request you to get, gather all these email id new email id and please uh, send it to me now rc are you there yes sir yes sir oh. yes sir yeah it will be great help for me yeah, thanks okay guys uh, so we'll wait for a short break you know we'll wait for a 15 minutes i'll start clock so we'll not take 20 minutes we'll take 15 minutes only yes.
Hello. I hope I'm audible to you. Can you just give me a thumbs up if you're there? Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Ed. Um, So I'll come to the my intra ID once again, you know? and uh, if you just go and click on this user, you, know, you will get a user which are present inside my intra ID and. If you click on this uh, new user, you know, it is allowing me to create a direct member that is internal users, or you know, it is allowing me to create a guest user, which are external user. Okay, so this is acting as a direct member of my intra ID. I've just created and uh, I have just provided the password, you know, also in inside the intra ID. So I'm going to manage everything you know, related to this user. OK. But when I just go and provide the external user, so for example, uh, you're working on a one project, you know, OK, and uh, you had uh, some kind of a confusion, you know, uh, in understanding one particular topic. Uh, so you hired one consultant, you know, uh, for maybe uh, three months of time or maybe six months of time. OK, and during that time, you want to provide the access of your organization. OK, so that external pe person can also be able to uh, log in. You know, OK, and can can be able to do the daily activity. You know? So I can go and also add. The external user, so how do you going to add a consultant which you have joined for a you know, short duration of a time, maybe? by creating new external user. So we can click on a new external user. So let me pick up one username. So I'm just picking up the first user, Amit. Okay, so I'll just paste the email address. Okay, and all the things I can keep it as a you know, default. You know, so that is not compulsory. OK, and. So this user, once it is created, this user will receive an invitation on this email ID. OK, and once uh, he receives that invitation, he has to, uh, you know, uh, invitation, he has to accept that invitation. And during the acceptance uh, time, you know, OK, he will do a self registration also. OK, and once he complete that process, you know, he will be able to log in to the portal dot Azure dot com. Just like I shown you know, just like user one, he will be also able to you know, see you know, uh, the content of uh, uh, he will be able to log into the Azure portal, but he won't be able to see any content of a subscription. So let me just go and do. So I'll add. This new user. OK, and. Uh, very soon. You will receive an invite. OK. You will receive an invite once we accept that invite. You know, OK, we'll have to use. Uh, uh, login ID and password. You will use your email ID as a login ID, whatever this Gmail ID you have given to me. No, so you will use whatever Gmail ID you have provided. 
and uh, whatever your password. So because password is not, not going to manage by this entire ID for the guest user. You know, password will manage by whoever be the provider. You know, you know. So Gmail password only you will have to use it. Okay. So if you are not getting this invite, uh, you should see that invite uh, in the spam mail or uh, if it is not uh, visible in the uh, inbox then. Okay. So now if I just go and add all these user one by one, that will take a time. You know? Okay. But there is one option which is provided by the Azure, which is bulk operation. So I can click on this bulk operation. And I can do what bulk create bulk invite bulk delete. So what I want to do so in this case, I want to do bulk invite. So I'll just click on this bulk invite. You know, so very first thing it will allow me to download, uh, you know, some file. Okay, so let me just go and download that file. Let me open that file. Uh, this will be the file uh, which will be downloaded. Let me just go and just let me just go and use this download. I'll uh, just stop sharing. Just one sec. I'll just open that file. So this will be a CSV file. You can down open this CSV file. Maybe in the Excel, I am opening this CSV file. You, know, you can see this. So this will contain your email ID, which we want to invite. Okay, and then this will contain a address. You no, know, sending an invitation is okay. You know, okay, and welcome to. This this will be the uh, the welcome message. You will get it. Uh, so welcome to. Macron's organization. So this is the message you, know, you will get in the email and uh, by default one. Once you do a registration part, it will redirect you to this uh, website. My application dot Microsoft dot com. OK, but I don't want you to redirect to this website. Rather, I will redirect to the uh, the portal. So let me pick up the URL of a portal. OK, so this is the URL. I want. User to. Uh, redirect, you know, and here I'll provide the email address. You know? So I'll just go and use all the email address over here. So let me just use it from second email ID. <clears throat> I believe this is not, uh, you know, correct email ID. Please hack me dot now. Okay, I'll exclude this person. Okay, so I'll add all other user. Okay, and Copy. And if we save it. 
and I'll just go and take the CSV file. Place it over here. And I'll take the path. Go to intra ID. Under user. Under bulk operation. Bulk invite. And I'll upload that file which I have is created. So let me just go and upload the file user invite template dot csv. You know, file uploaded successfully. Once I submit, you know, it will take few seconds to load, and uh, within few seconds you will see uh, all those users will listed over here and uh, individual user you know you should have received an email okay once you receive the email you you have to accept that invitation and once you accept that invitation it will take you to the uh, portal.azure.com uh, the people who have uh, provided that email address later i'll just add them also Okay, out of all this uh, 35 user out of 35 three has failed i don't know who so you'll have to check uh, your email id okay. just go and refresh this Okay, so all these users must have seen uh, the invite. Okay, so during this process, you can go just go and uh, accept that invitation and just go and log in. Uh, meanwhile, I'll just see Archie, did you share uh, that uh, other file to me? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, uh, so I'll just stop sharing and, and open my email. Uh, there are few users which has been given their name. Let me add them also. Uh, take their name. Okay, now I'll share my screen once again. Uh, So there are users. I'll copy this users. Okay, and I'll try and upload these user in the same Excel file. So if you open this same Excel file. OK, so here only you can just go and you know, type that email ID. You, know? you can upload this uh, email ID. OK, uh, so if I just do this uh, step once again, you will not receive. If you have received the email once, it will not uh, you know, okay, send the email to uh, once again to you. But those who are new people, they will get the invite. Now let me just go and upload this. Open the intra ID. Bulk operation, bulk invite. And there I will select user invite template. 
file is uploaded and after that i'll say submit so this will take a few seconds and you will see uh, So it is currently in progress. So there are few, there are 35 uh, or uh, uh, 30 odd user. They have already been created. So all of them will not create repeat. So all these will fail. Another, whoever be the new user, they will create. So I'm expecting at least 35, you know, uh, failure. Okay. So those three entries got failed out of 91 people have provided. Uh, so I should see actually uh, 88 people should be present in my active directory plus two are already present. So there are altogether 90 people I should see in my active directory. So if I refresh it, uh, 77, how come? So in 790, no? Okay, uh, so I can see 77 people who have provided their email ID. Okay, and um, does anybody, other person wants to be a part? So all these people have just provided newly email ID. So let me just go and take their email ID. Let me add them also. Okay, I'm requesting you to provide uh, your correct email ID. Uh, is this Richa? Is this correct email ID? people are providing like uh, hackme.com you're not at least going to do that i hope you are not doing us So I'll take the email. Okay, so those people who have received it, please uh, add them. Uh, sorry, uh, please. Uh, go and accept the invitation and just log in to that portal. Yeah. Uh, so some people are providing that. Uh, so I'll add this person also, last person. Okay, so I'll add these new people in my active directories. Okay. 
Okay, so let me just go and create another file. And in that file, I'll just go and add only new user. So let me just go and open this in the cell template. Okay. And I'll just remove all other entry. Okay, I'll keep only one entry. Okay, and I'll add uh, these people. Oh. Okay, and I'll just go into a bulk operation. I'll say bulk invite. I'll upload that file and upload second file no, and I'll click on submit. OK, so it will take a few seconds and once it is completed, you will you will receive an email. And once you accept that email, uh, uh, you will be able to log into the portal. So I'm just waiting for this to complete. Yeah, I think this is completed in my case. Just repeat this process once again and refresh it. You can see 83 user has added. Okay, so you can see 83 users have added. You know, so guys, um, uh, you must have received the email, uh, so you can go and you know accept that. And once you receive that email, you should see. You're logged in. Yes, sir, you should use a password of a Gmail or whatever ID you have provided. You should use that password only. You know, because password is not going to manage by, you know, OK, my entry ID password is going to pro, you know, manage by, you know, whatever be the email ID you have provided. That uh, domain that will uh, manage your password. So you will be acting as an external user for my entry ID. Yeah, good. Uh, thank you so much for confirming. So you are logged in. Yes, uh, uh, Nitin, I'll just show you how to log in. So maybe uh, you can go to. Uh, that uh, invitation which you have received. You may just go and open that invitation in the. Uh, uh, maybe uh, the inbox of whatever email ID you have provided. If it is not visible in the inbox, you should see. This must be inside a spam mail. OK, once you saw that you have to accept that invitation and uh, as a process of accepting an invitation, you know it will register yourself uh, into the Microsoft Azure. OK, and you will be automatically will be redirected. Uh, you know, OK, to the portal dot Azure dot com. If you have not redirected to the portal dot Azure dot com, you have accepted that invitation. Then you can go and open a 
okay one one more window okay open a browser just go to portal.azure.com it will provide you this login box you know so i should go and provide the user so which i have created so user 1 i'll take a user principal of that user 1 as a login id but here in, in your case you can provide your login id your email id okay and once i provide a password you know okay uh, you will be able to log in ha huh, but for the few user you know okay uh, it may not uh, see uh, this login is not recognized or this login is not a part of enter id okay so they they should wait for at least for 5 minute you know or 10 minutes let's allow you know okay uh, that login id to sync up in the enter id okay and you can try that uh, after 5 minute okay and once you provide the password you should be able to log in to the portal you know and once you are able to log in to the portal you are going to see like this because since you are not having a permission on the entry id or sorry you are not having a permission on the azure subscription currently you are able to see like this Okay, so now what I'll do, I want to, you know, assign some roles to the user which I have created just now, you know. So this user, currently this user is not able to see anything inside my subscription, you know. So it's not able to see anything inside my subscription, neither resource group nor any resources not subscription but actually speaking this is my actual username if i look at okay i am having subscription i can see a you know, couple of subscription but i'll give a, a permission on this particular subscription okay and that subscription also you know having uh, maybe a couple of resource group So currently, these many resource group are available under my uh, Visual Studio subscription. This is the subscription, and these are the resource group I'm having currently. So now let me just go and create one resource group. I will create an resource group. I will name that resource group as training resource group. and i'll say review plus create okay so we will say review plus create and i'll say create button i'll click on a create button okay so once your you know resource group is created inside that resource group you know i will be uh, you know creating something but now as of now let me provide you know this resource group permission to the user called as user one you know so currently if you look at this user this is the user one i have logged in as a user one this user is not able to see that resource group which i've just now created you know so let me assign that permission to this user to be able to see something from the training resource group so i will go inside the resource on which i want to give a permission so if i want to give a permission to the subscription i can go inside the subscription if i want to give a permission on the resource group i'll go inside the resource group if i want to give a permission on a resource particular resource maybe storage account or app service i'll go into that the respective resource and i'll say this option 
identity and access management iam so using this option i can provide a access on this resource to a particular user so what i'll do i'll repeat by clicking on this option it will allow me to provide access on this resource to a user okay so by using this option i am going to do our back role based resource control or role based uh, access control okay so i'll click on this i will add some permission so i'll just click on this add button you know so what i want to do i want to add a role i'll click on this add role okay and once you click on this add role you know so it will ask you what kind of a permission you want to give so there are a lot of permissions available depending on the which resource you have choose you know there are a lot of permissions like for example reader is a common permission i'll just go and provide okay but apart from that okay there are some privilege permissions also okay so if i go into this you know and i can see the privilege permission like for example i can assign owner you know i can give a contributor permission you know access review permission user access you know administrator permission i can go and provide so for the user one let me provide you know okay a contributor permission let me say that user one okay will be able to read will be able to create resource will be able to delete resource okay under my resource group so where i am providing this access on my resource group so on that resource group okay this user one will be able to do anything so let me see now member now to which member you want to give a permission so i can give a permission either on user principal or on service principal you know as i show, shown you that uh, you know earlier diagram i can maintain what users inside uh, enter id or i can maintain a application inside the enter id when i go and add a user you know every user will have a user principal when i go and register a application every application will have a ser uh, service principal you know so user will have user principal application will have you know service principle you know so let me add that user principle now and i'll just go and select okay and i'll just go and select that user so i'll click on this user and i should say user 1 okay so i'll just go and add this user 1 Okay, and let me say select. Okay, and let me say review plus sign. So let me assign this permission to the user one. So what I did, I did, you know, I added a contributor permission to the user one. this is the you know okay uh, object id or service uh, object id or uh, user principal for that uh, user one and i'll say assign okay so once you assign that permission okay uh, mostly uh, that user need uh, need to log out and log in once again so i've just given a permission just now you know so it's good practice just log out once log in once again okay but i'll just refresh and i'll just see whether it is reflecting or not okay, i'll just say refresh and i'll see whether it is reflecting or not if it is not reflecting it's better to do log out once and log in once again you know so it's not reflecting in my case yeah 
it got reflected if, when I did it, uh, you know, refresh second time. But if it is not happening in your case, you can simply log out and log in. You know? So now this user is able to see training resource group. And for the training resource group, he is the contributor. So this user will be able to create a, you know, a resource inside a training resource group. Okay. So apart from this training resource group, okay, this user is not able to see any other resource group. I'm having a couple of other resource groups. These are the total number of resource group I'm having currently present inside my subscription. You know, so since I provided access on this resource group, you know, this user, which user, this user one is able to see only the training resource group. So like that, I will be providing access to you all. Okay. So everybody, those who are part of my intra ID, so I will be providing access, you know, to you all uh, to be able to uh, access my, uh, you know, uh, the subscription. Let me take this question. Yes, uh, so as I said, uh, it will give you something like this kind of an error. You know, you'll, you'll have to wait for some time, okay, and then you'll have to try it if this is happening frequently. Uh, if this is happening currently, then. Because I just now added you, so it may not, it may take some time to reflect. Users are attached to the entra ID. They are not attached to the subscriptions. You know? So users are attached to the entra ID. So if you go and attach a subscription to a particular entra ID, you know, uh, then you can go and provide uh, access to this uh, to to uh, the user. I'll clarify on this also. I'll talk on this also. see is there any other question okay there are no other questions so now let me add you know, all you people now those are the part of my entire id let me add everyone you know, inside uh, my uh, uh, let, let me add a permission on the resource group. I'll go and if I do it individually, you know, uh, so all uh, 80, 85 people are, who are added in my intra ID, you know, if I do it individually, okay, one by one, it is uh, going to take uh, you know, a lot of pain, okay, for adding me first of all, and for managing it later also, it will, you know, okay, uh, will will you know, will provide me a lot of pain. Okay, to manage all those permissions, you know. So it is not at all suggested, you know, okay, to manage the permission through directly. Okay. But you should go and create, okay, a group. And those are called as security group. Okay. And for the adding a security group, okay, you should uh, come to the Entra ID can come to the groups and here, you know, I'll go and create one group. So there are a lot of groups that is already present. Okay. So I'll just go and create one more group and this group through this group, I will be assigning your permissions. Okay, and hence this is called as a security group. 
because we are going to you know allow some permissions okay i will control the permissions okay who will control the permission maybe uh, 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 administrator you know uh, the global administrator or uh, the access administrator will control that permission or the owner of that particular resource that that person is also can be controlling the uh, the access permissions also so let me say maybe external users group you know so this is i'll call this as a external user group and since i'm using a free group you know i can't use a, sorry since i'm using a free license you know i can't choose the other uh, type of a uh, you know group membership type that is specially uh, you know dynamic type you are having you know? so dynamic type of a group uh, it is possible for you to create only in the premium license well, since we are using a free license you know it is only assigned so you have to assign the member explicitly to them you know so i'll just go and create i can do add the member from here itself but i'll do it later i can create the security group and once you create the security group let me now add in that security group okay in this security group and let me add okay uh few users i'll go inside that i should see something called as a member you know i'll click on this member and i'll say add member okay and if you just click on the add member we'll come to the users and all these users which are present you know okay i can go and provide access Select all or something. I review it and I'll assign everybody a permission. Okay. Um, actually, I was planning to give a contributor rights, but uh, you know the count is uh, huge now, so it is not feasible for me to provide a contributor rights for everybody. Because if everybody start creating a resource, it will be a problematic. and let me all so there are 82 external which have provided uh, which have added in my subscription as a guest user you know so all those 82 member i'm adding inside the group you know so all these member okay is part of now the group And now I can give a permission. Now, what I can do? 
I can just go and give a permission. Okay. On my resource group. You know? So where can I find resource group? Under my subscription. Which subscription? My resource group is present. In this subscription, your resource group is present. Okay. So on my resource group, I will assign a permission through RBAC. I will click on this access control IAM access identity and access management, you know, and I'll add a role. So what do you want to do? You want to add a permission. Okay, and this time I will add a reader permission. Okay. Now to which user? You know, there are Many users are present. OK, but from this I can choose a group also. So there is one group I have created. Inside that group there are 82 members. So please assign reader permission to all the 82 member which are present inside this particular group. So let me select. OK, and I'll just go and choose a group. And this is the group external user group. I will select that. And I'll say review and assign. I'll click on this finally. OK, and I'll click and now you should be able to see. The resource group in the portal. Now if you go in inside the portal, OK, Maybe wait for a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds, couple of minutes. Maybe refresh a couple of time. If it is happening, good. Not happening, just come back, log out, and log in once again. Okay, so you should be able to see one resource group. No, you should be able to see this training resource group. So just can you just confirm? No, are you able to see that resource group? Meanwhile, I'll take a few questions. Yes, Priya. So it is. So we have provided the access on a group. Correct. OK, Santosh, uh, you, know, uh, you should uh, you know, uh, able to see that particular page. You are able to log in. You will have to give some time. Because it is sync up. You know, it will take some time during sync up. If it is not happening, then you may try to provide me another you know, uh, alternate email address. I'll add that email address. You know, OK, then you can try that. Sudarshan is asking. Okay. So contributor, you know what contributor uh, can be able to do. Uh, so Sudarshan question is, uh, uh, can you just explain uh, the permissions like reader, contributor, owner, you know? So we are having a lot of uh, permissions. So what reader can be do? So reader will be able to read all the resource straightforward. OK, so if I given a permission on the resource group. They will be able to see the resources present inside this resource group. But they won't be able to do any kind of a, you know, OK, adding a new resource, deleting an existing resource. OK, so stuff like that. They can't modify that resource group. If I've given a permission as a contributor on this, uh, you know, resource group, OK, so that contributor, the person who is having a contributor access, you know, so they will be able to add a new resource. You know, they will be able to delete an existing resource. Okay, so they will be able to you know, perform any kind of an activity except one. Okay, they won't be able to, you know, uh, give whatever be the contributor rights they are having. They can't carry forward that contributor rights to 
any other user. So for example, in, in this case, I have just given this user. This is the global administrator. You know? OK, so I've just given a permission to the user one. OK, which permission I've given? I have given a permission. Contributor permission. So once I have this contributor permission as a user one, I can't pass on this permission to the user two. You know? So if I have a contributor permission, you know, passing on permission is not possible. You know? So this is not possible in the contributor permission. Since so since I have provided a contributor permission, it is not possible for me to do that. OK, but if I take one more case. Where I just go and. Draw the same kind of a thing. So I'm having user one. And I'm having user two. So user one has. You know, uh, Makran has provided the. Owner permission to the user one, you know, so. If I just go and provide owner permission to the user one, so owner will be able to do anything. No? So owner will be able to add the resource, delete the resource in the you know resource group. Okay. And owner can do anything, and owner is also capable of passing on that permission to the another user. You know, so it is. Under my control, I can pass on that permission to next user also if I have that owner permission. OK, and if I have a simple read permission, so uh, you know that person will be able to you know, uh, read the content of the resource code. So I have given a permission, a reader permission you know, to all my external users. So all they are you know, will be able to see the content of the training resource group. but I've just given a permission contributor permission to the user one, you know, so that user one also will be able to add some, you know, resources under this training resource group. You know? So I hope uh, this point is clear. OK, and there is one more permission called as uh, user access administrator so for example uh, if i just take a third case as a admin uh, as a global administrator i've just provide to the user one okay a permission as a user access administrator you know so user access administrator you know uh, of course can see the content uh, uh, user access administrator cannot create the new resource, cannot delete the new res uh, existing resource. OK, but user access administrator, you know, is capable of uh, passing that permission. You know, so this person can give the permission. To the next user. If I have a user access, you know, administrator permission. I'll just write that complete permission name user access control. Yeah. So if I have this, this person is capable of doing. Okay, he can't uh, go and create new resource, but he will be able to pass on that uh, resource uh, permission to the another users. OK, and I can control all these things by using our back. OK, I hope this point is clear to you. Yeah, uh, Ritesh is asking very good question. 
you know, Ritesh is asking about uh, uh, what's the difference between uh, AD role and uh, RBAC. You know? So you can see this uh, AD role, I can give a permission on my uh, entry ID. Okay, and through the RBAC, I can give a permission on my subscription. You know? So if you want to access few, you know, subscription, you will be able to give a permission on your entra ID subscription by using an RBAC. So if I want to give a permission on my subscription, on my resource group, I will go and give the permission to the other member, okay, by using an RBAC. So role-based access control, you know, is for giving a permission on the subscription or on the resource group or on the particular resource. Vis -a -vis, if I see our AD role, AD role, you know, I can give, you know, permission on the entry ID. That means uh, uh, I can make any one of the user which is present over here, you know, I can make as a user administrator. So that person is also capable of adding, you know, one user. So currently, I'll just show you what we have just now seen that we have seen as a RBAC. There is one more kind of a permission called as entry ID permission. So for that, I can come to the entry ID. Okay. As of now, I can see user. I'll search for user one. Okay. This is the user one. Okay. And this is the uh, login of a user one. So currently, if you look at this user one, okay. And as a user one, if I search for enter ID, no, this person is not capable of adding and no user this person cannot add a new user in the active directory in the entry id okay why because this user is not having that uh, user uh, administration permission on my entry id you know so by using a ad permission I can give a permission on my, you know, entry ID on my active directory and by using a RBAC, I can control the permission of a subscription or resource group or particular resource. You know, so if I wish to give the permission for this user and I want to give a permission as a AD permission, you know, so you will see something called as assigned rule. So by using this option, you are going to assign some, you know, entry ID uh, roles to this particular user. So if I just go and click on this assigned role, there are a lot of uh, entry ID roles which are present. Can you see this? And the same interface I'll get add assignment. Okay, and here you will see a lot of entry ID roles which are present. I can make this. Uh, person as a global reader, global administrator. No, okay. And depending on your choice, you can choose anything. But I'll just go and make this as a user administrator. So this is the administrator. So, so currently what I'm doing, I am trying to make user one as a user administrator. So user one also will be able to add a member inside the entry ID. A new user inside the entry ID. So let me just go. That selection is gone. User administrator. I'll just choose this. I'll add. Okay. Now this user one should have a role. User administrator role. And once it is having a role, We'll have to give some time to sync up. You know, normally it will you know take a few minutes to sync up. And once I come back in the login of user one, if refresh is working, that's good. If it is not, 
then log out and log in once. So first I'll try refreshing the page. Maybe I'll refresh the page a couple of times. OK, and I'll confirm. User one is only logged in. And now I'll just try and see new user. You know, OK, and that should allow me to create a new user earlier. It was disabled. It is now enabled. Now it is OK. You are capable of creating the new users. So if you are having a permission on ED. Intra ID that doesn't mean your will you will be you know having a permission on the subscription. OK, so having a user administration permission on an intra ID that will not provide you know OK the access on any particular resource. Having a global administration permission that doesn't provide the access on a subscription. In order to get a uh, access on a subscription, you should provide the access on that particular resource and that access I will be providing through our back. In order to provide the access on the you know active directory or enter ID, I should provide it through the enter ID role. I hope you know this is clear to you. Uh, okay, okay, Harshal, I'll uh, repeat it for you. But let me see first other question. What you are saying? Other people are saying. You just click on that change directory, no? Oh, okay, uh, so he's uh, trying to answer Khalid's question. Is trying to answer. Yeah, thanks, Khalid. Only is asking one question on intra ID level. The user will be able to perform higher level operations such as make another user owner, remove user, change user policy, R back on the such. Uh, okay, uh, she is trying to answer basically the you know, question which is asked uh, earlier. Yeah, uh, it is correct, by the way. So on the intra ID level, no, whatever be the permission you are going to provide, you know, which is uh, on the intra ID, you know, okay, and the permission which you are going to give through the RBAC, which will be on the, uh, which will be on the the particular subscription. A tenant, uh, you know, okay, is uh, is a instance of the intra ID. You can see. A tenant can be you know, term as a instance of the you know intra ID. So this currently I am using one tenant only. No, I am using single tenant only. Okay. Currently, if I show you my login, this is my current boy login. Okay, so currently I am using you know, this is a tenant only. This is a tenant name actually. Primary directory is my tenant name. And inside my, you know, so this account is associated with a lot of tenant. Okay. And you can see there are so many tenants which are present in my enter ID. But currently, if you are looking, you know, your case, you're associated with my primary tenant. So why? Because you, I have added you inside my primary tenant, and you should be associated with your respective tenant. Maybe uh, your Outlook tenant or your Gmail tenant or something like that. Okay. And by the way, if you want to switch from this tenant to some other tenant, I can just go and switch back. Okay. And there are so many tenants. These are the tenants I have just added in a in my favorite, but if I just go and see all tenants, you know, I can see all the tenants which are present. 
So if we just go and uh, switch back to the HCL tenant, which I've created for my SL batch. Okay, so if you look at your tenant, you know, this tenant has these many users, but you know, this tenant is not having any kind of a subscription attached. So what I'll do, I'll go back to the home page and I'll see this lock screen. Why? Because there is no subscription attached to this particular tenant. Okay. So if I just go and search for a subscription in this particular tenant, okay, I will not find any kind of a subscription in the HCL, uh, you know, okay, tenant. Because that I have added in my primary tenant subscription, the one subscription I'm having that I have attached to my you know, primary tenant. Okay, so I'll just go back to my primary tenant, switch directory. I'll go, come back inside the primary tenant. I'll switch. Okay, and here in this, I'm having a subscription. Okay, now I can decide this subscription to attach to which uh, particular tenant, you know, so I can go and say, click on this Visual Studio subscription. Now you can just go and say, change directory. You know? So your tenant, you can assign it to, you know, any, uh, sorry, your subscription, you can attach to any tenant. You know, by clicking on this change directory. So if you just go and just assign it to HCL tenant, you know, so that will be assigned to the HCL tenant. You know? So once I go and assign it to HCL tenant, all the users which are belongs to my primary tenant, they will lose the access on my you know permission, access on my subscription. You know so why? Because Users are belong to a particular tenant. Tenant is an instance of an entry ID or active directory. Okay. And when I switch the subscription from my one tenant to the another tenant, you know, okay, all the users they will lost the access. I'll just do it through the diagrammatically so that you will be able to understand in a better way. So here I'm having a primary tenant. Let me just draw it uh, like this. Maybe I'm just having a primary tenant. Okay, here I'm having a HCL tenant. Okay, and both are the instance of the Active Directory only. You know, both are the entry ID instance only. So this is my primary tenant okay and by the way i have just uh, given a name as primary tenant uh, there is a cl tenant okay there are few users which are attached inside this you know like for example user 1 user 2 user 3 you know so there are few users which are attached to a cl tenant user 1 user 2 user three and there are few users you know there are almost uh, 85 to you know 86 users which are present inside my primary tenant currently you know? so all those you know 85 86 user user one okay user will be 85 you know? and if you are having a subscription you know so what this tenant will go and have, you know, tenant will contain only the identity. Entra ID is going to, you know, as I said initially, Entra ID is going to do what? Entra ID is going to hold the user's identity and the application identity. It's only responsible for holding the identity. Okay. 
so this primary tenant will be isolated from the hcl tenant you know that means whatever be the users that are present in my primary tenant you can't see them inside your hcl tenant they will be isolated from each other okay and now whatever be the resource for creating the resource i need a subscription so once i have a active subscription i will be able to create resource group virtual machine and stuff like that you know so currently my subscription was attached to Is not working. Okay. So currently, you know, I'm having a subscription, Visual Studio subscription. You know, so I'll just uh, draw that subscription over here, maybe. So I'm having one subscription. Okay, and the name of that subscription is Visual Studio subscription, but I'll just call this as a subscription. Okay, so now currently my subscription is attached to the primary tenant. No, subscription is attached to the primary tenant. You know, so that you know, uh, as a global administrator or as a user administrator of this primary tenant, you know, okay. So as a global administrator, Makran can manage both the tenant. As a user administrator, you know, okay, user one will be able to manage only the users from this particular tenant. They can't. This person is can't uh, you know manage the users which are present inside another tenant. Okay, so I have added a subscription for the primary tenant. Okay, and as a global administrator or as a owner or as a user access administrator, I am giving a permission on this subscription. So, for example, in this case, training resource group was present. So, for that training resource group, I have given a permission. All the users as a reader permission. Okay, so if I just go and move this subscription. You know, I just okay, move this subscription to any other tenant. You know? So of course, all the users they are having a uh, permission on this subscription and which are attached to the primary tenant, they will lose the access. Okay, so why? Because the subscription is attached to the different tenant. Okay, and of course, there should be explicitly access should be granted on this subscription to this user you know so subscription is a billing boundary the number of resources you will be you know create under subscription okay you will get a build you know for those resource how many number of resources i am consume, consuming i am creating you know so for that against that it will be billed to you you know, but uh, this entry ID or Active Directory, formally called as Active Directory, okay, it is not. Uh, you know, it is going to provide only the identity, identity to the user, identity to the uh, no, application. You know, so it will not be built anything to you for using it. As of now, at least, it is not going to build you. Okay. But if you use a subscription, you will get built. OK, so I hope uh, you know, this point is clear to you. OK, so. Currently, my subscription I have moved to. I think my primary directory, no? which one? Have I moved to the primary directory? Okay. 
Yeah, I have moved to the HCL directory. So can you see this? Now the primary directory can't see. Now you can also see that, uh, you know, you will see the error, that earlier error, what you used to get. So if I show you this user, you know, and if I just, you know, if this user is goes to the uh, home screen, that user will also see the same earlier error, you know, but this user was having the contributor permission. But since this user is not a part of uh, HCL tenant, you know, okay, he will also not see that uh, the content of a subscription. Isn't it? Can you just confirm? Can you see? That content. OK, uh, so let me just move this question. I'll I'll take this questions from your side, uh, but let me just before that just let me move that uh, subscription in my primary tenant. You know, so I'll just go back. To the directory where I have uh, the tenant currently. So I'm having a tenant currently in my HCL. So I'll switch to the HCL tenant. Okay, so there we'll see, you know, okay, subscription Visual Studio. And if you look at this subscription is having all the resources, you know. So for example, you have created a resource group. So you will see that training resource group present over here. OK, so I'll just go into the subscription. I will move back the subscription to the primary directory. So let me just take this subscription to the primary directory. OK. I'll just select my primary directory and I'll say change. OK. That is possible. Primary directory I'm selecting and I'm saying change. Maybe we'll uh, try during the break time. Let me try once again last time. Primary directory and switch. It is certainly doesn't happen. Okay, so currently it is not happening. Let me just try to move this to the Accenture directory. Let me just try to just, just switch. So, okay, uh, that's okay. So I'll do that uh, during the break time, you know, offline. I'll take the question. What this term don't. Yeah, it is. Uh, so Ritesh is saying. So tenant means active directory. Yeah, it is instance of active directory. You can say that. So there are multiple tenant we can create. You know, as you can see, in my case, I was having a lot of tenant. OK. So you can consider it is an instance. Instance means, you know, the object of a you know Active Directory. You can see, but uh, ultimately it will go and make use of a feature of Active Directory only. Okay, but if you create two tenant, those two tenant will be uh, isolated from you know. Okay, uh, my earlier tenant. I have already answered Nitin. Uh, so tenant is the instance of the Active Directory. Uh, you can add uh, Sudarshan is asking how many. Uh, 
subscription can add to a tenant. So you can add how, the number of subscription you are having. That means number of subscription you can add. And while creating a resource, it will you know uh, ask you which subscription you want to create this resource. So we'll have to select the appropriate uh, subscription you know, while creating a resource. Enter ID also will be different from other tenant. Yes, uh, so because uh, tenant is an instance of an enter ID, you know, so this enter ID feature or whatever be the users group application I have attached to the primary tenant that will not be available inside my Accenture tenant or my HCL tenant or my Siemens tenant. They will be isolated from each other. No, they can't be controlled uh, you know, from the primary tenant. Primary tenant is just the name of the tenant. I've just renamed it as a primary tenant. OK. And that is not uh, you know, uh, going to come from Azure. You know, so I have just renamed it. So you mean each tenant will have some identity. Yes. Absolutely, Ritesh. You know, so every tenant will contain the identity, the identity related to the group, the applications, and okay, so on. ID will only be one which control both tenant. You can't say that enter ID only be one, you know, because uh, you will have, you know. One enter ID, you can consider one. There is one class. OK, and I have created two objects of the class. So one object will contain a different data. Another object will contain a different data. OK, so. So enter ID users will be created for every tenant. So I'll just show you. There is no such concept of. Uh, I mean, only enter ID. So if I just go inside my primary tenant, you know, I will be able to see, you know, all the features of my primary tenant. I will be able to see, okay, all the features of my primary tenant over here. So all the identities which are added in the primary tenant, all you know, eighty-three users I have added. No, I can see it over here. But if I, you know, switch back to the HCL tenant, okay. So this is the HCL tenant. Okay. So this, if you look at enter ID of this HCL tenant, you know, it will have a different enter ID. So if you go and maintain. Different identities, different application, different groups. Okay, and there is no such thing, you know. Uh, there is a, you know, a primary tenant or some. No, no such thing. Only the user who can control. So, for example, this user, this user, Makran user, has created this tenant. You know, so all those tenants can be controlled by a particular user. I hope uh, I'm, my point is. I'll try. I convey my point correctly. Yes, you can have a different enter ID instance. I would say. Technically, you are having a different enter ID only. OK. But uh, you know, OK, I can say, you know, you can uh, conceptually I'll explain this way. You will have a different enter ID instances. By creating a two different uh, enter ID. Ritesh is asking how to add enter ID tenant. You know? uh, so you can add earlier. It was possible to add enter ID tenant. You know? OK, we could have done it by now. OK, but. Uh, uh, since 26 October 2023, okay, it is not possible for me to add an enter ID because I am not having a 
you know, a required license. I've just shown you, you know, okay, uh, if you have attended the session from the beginning. So, do you mean once principal agency part of a tenant or principal agency cannot be part of more than? No, it can be a part of a multiple tenant, you know, just like uh, you have to add, you know, so uh, for example, I have added a user. Okay, so there are six users who are present inside this tenant. So these are the member of this tenant. So you can add these member as an external user into my another tenant. That is possible. So your one user can be a part of a multiple tenant, you know. OK, but one user cannot be part of, uh, you know, OK, multiple tenant as a member, you know, it will be part of a, you know, OK. Like a guest user or something. Yeah, Santosh, I'll add you. OK. Uh, so me, just user, but not in. No, of course, because you will, if you add it as a, you know, a new member, uh, you will have to maintain a different password, no, for that uh, member. Yes, absolutely. Unknown user is saying, you know, uh, so there will be a different user and different management you will be doing you know, for those users. OK, so. And uh, I'll just show you, you know, OK, that part, that part. I'll, uh, once again, I'll show you that uh, tenant creation part. I'll show you. But before that, let me just go and switch back my subscription to my primary tenant. OK, if it is not happening, then I'll. Do it offline. Maybe I'll have to log out and log in one second. So primary tenant and switch back to this tenant. Yeah, this this time it has happened correctly. You know, so now if I just go and switch to my. OK, primary tenant. OK. And if I come inside the entry ID, by the way, this is I'm inside the entry ID only. If I just go and search for an entry ID. You know, on the overview page itself, you will get an option of managing tenant. You can click on this manage tenant. OK, and earlier I used to create an tenant by using this option only. But now it is not possible for me to create. You know, so all these tenant I have created by using that option only. OK, so there is an option called as create. And you can create a new tenant. And that option is currently disabled. Why currently disabled? Because you know, this primary directory, the tenant which I have created earlier, so that tenant is not having a premium license. That tenant is having a free license. And the tenant, you know, from where you are creating another tenant. Okay. So in this case, primary tenant is creating an another tenant. Okay. So that primary tenant should have a primary license or pri uh, uh, premium license. Then only it will be enabled. OK, but as I already so, uh, showed you this also. If I go and you know, try to you know, purchase a free uh, trial of one month free premium uh, license. You know, that is also not possible in. Uh, in today's scenario, you know, so I'll just go and try to uh, activate the free trial for uh, the free uh, trial for premium license for one month. You know, I'll go, go into, into that license. And by the way, you can see this license currently. Currently, I'm having a free license. And if I go into this license. OK, if I just go and click on this uh, all product.
and if I go and click on a try and buy. Okay, there is an option of uh, you know activating premium P1 license, activating premium P2 license. There is an option. You know? So by activating this, you will get a premium license for 30 days. Okay, so this premium license, who, who is purchasing? You know, primary directory as an organization, that organization is purchasing this uh, premium license. Okay, so when I go and activate this, okay, so it will ask you who is the administrator, you know, okay, provide the email address, okay, and ultimately it will just go and open a form where it will, you know, allow me to uh, enter a GSTN number, which I don't have as an individual, you know, uh, we don't have a GSTN number. If you are having that GSTN number with you, and if you are willing to provide that, you can go and fill up this form. You know, so let's go and fill up this form also. Chalo. Okay. So, you know, set up an account, it will ask you, you know, and all this detail, personal detail, I can type, you know, okay, I'm having that personal detail. You know, I can put my organization name, but that organization name, okay, ultimately it will ask you, you know, okay, to provide a GSA number. You know, and once you provide that detail, you will be able to, you know, get that premium license for one month for free. And once you are having that premium license, okay, you will be able to create a, a new tenant. Otherwise, no, new tenant creation is not possible. Okay, so you, you will be able to create the new tenant. So this will be only activated only if you're holding a premium license. I hope this point is clear to you. B2C is a different option, you know, business to consumer, you know. So if you are having uh, some external user, if you're creating an application, you know, and uh, your application, uh, so for example, I'll tell you that also. Okay, so I'll just tell you this B2C extension. So if you're creating an application, which is uh, maybe registered within your organization, okay, and that application you want to uh, allow uh, maybe user of uh, maybe another social media account, you know, so I can provide that another social media account uh, user uh, ID and uh, password, okay. So maybe I can provide uh, uh, Instagram ID, I can come over here and I can access my detail. I can provide Google ID. I can come over here. I can access my detail. Okay, access the detail of uh, you know application. Okay. So you can provide the other social media account or other account uh, you know okay credential information okay to be a part of uh, you know to be able to access my uh, you know application or the content of the application. So that setup. No, I can do it in the B2C. Okay. Okay, uh, so. Guys, if you are not having any other question, you know, uh, we are good to take a lunch break. Okay, so I'll just ask. Do you have any other question? I can take a couple of questions more. Yes, it is. Okay, uh, so cool. So we will uh, wait for a break. Uh, and once we come back from a break, uh, you know, okay. We will discuss uh, two things. Okay, we'll discuss virtual network and maybe we'll add a couple of virtual machine. Okay, we'll see some connectivity and you know we'll see that uh, later. We'll see the uh, app service. We'll create an app service and we'll deploy the, that application inside the app service.
Okay, cool. So, uh, shall we wait for a break now? So we we will wait for a lunch now. Okay, and I'll start the clock. Okay, so we'll come back uh, after an hour. No, so we'll wait for a break. Uh, Nilesh Yadav is asking which language help for easy English language. Uh, achha, oh, sorry, uh, because there are options. I, I got your question now. Okay. Uh, you, you mean to say uh, which programming language uh, does it help? Okay. I, I got your question. Okay. But by the way, there is an option of, uh, you know, okay, attempting this exam, you know, okay, uh, by using English language, Chinese language, Japanese language, you know, okay. So there are uh, different uh, you know, options are available. Okay. By the way, if you look at the programming language, no particular programming language, you know, okay, is necessary for this exam because you will not get any uh, you know, question related to the programming languages. No? So either you will come back, you know, come from, uh, you know, okay, uh, programming background, that's okay. But uh, people who are coming from an infrastructure background, they also will be able to, you know, uh, you know uh, able to take up this exam. No, so no, no particular uh, language background you need for this. Huh. But for doing a developer exam, you should have a background of a, you know, developer. So maybe C sharp language background will help. You know, if you are going and appearing for AZ two zero four. Ah uh, yes, sir. So uh, after this, you will get a recording. Uh, the recording will be added on, on our YouTube channel. So that detail will be uh, shared to you uh, uh, by uh, by Archie. So uh, later, uh, maybe uh, you can uh, get the link from her. You should be able to log in, Ritesh. Uh, did you receive that invitation? Uh, by the way, let me just go and add another user who um, requested me to add. Uh, then you should be able to log in. You uh, you have to accept that invitation. You know, just go and click on that accept invitation link, and once you do that, you know, you should be able to log in. If it is not happening, provide your alternate email address. I'll just uh, go and try to add you also. So let me just go and add this person. So I'm adding this as a external user. C sharp experience not particularly for uh, all the uh, certification exam, but for the developer exam it will help you definitely. Uh, Two zero four examination it will help you. So uh, it will help you for the AZ two zero four exam. Uh, you should get a request, uh, you know, because I I did you know okay. Uh, transfer that uh, subscription from its uh, HCL to primary tenant just now. So it will take some time to reflect that uh, request. OK, so maybe you'll have to uh, just go and uh, wait for some time and then you'll have to try. I'll add this user also.
So which exam, Ajit, you are talking about? You are talking about a Microsoft exam? Achha, that you have to schedule, no? Uh, you can go back to this page. The exam page, AZ104 exam page. I'll just show you. So you can go to this AZ104 exam page. You can schedule your exam. And currently the cost of exam you know, is uh, 4,800 rupees. OK, but uh, if your company is giving you some voucher, you know, so you can just check with your company or you can uh, you know, check with the Archie whether you know, OK, voucher can be provided from our side. You, know, you can do that uh, and you can once you schedule the exam, you can uh, you know, fix the time slot, time, date time. You can choose that date time as per your. As per your comfort. OK, uh, is that uh, you were asking Ajit? So I hope you are. I'm able to give you answer. To your query. And this user, and we will wait for a break. I just add. Okay, I'll add last one. OK, cool. Uh, so we'll come back uh, after our. Uh, let me just reset this.